My first uh, call, eye-opening call was about two weeks into my assignment at Station 20. Uh, we had a train versus pedestrian and uh, a gentleman decided he didn't want to live any further so he uh, stepped in front of a train in an area. Um, we ended up going out and it was not a, a rescue at that point, it was simply body recovery um, and we, you know, we ended up uh, searching a wide area for pieces of body and uh, it was one of those things that really made me step back and realize it's not just putting out fires, it's not just uh, you know p pulling kitties out of trees. Located in the Central Valley of California, the Fresno Fire Department, established in 1877. Fresno Fire Department is one of the oldest departments in the United States, rich in history and tradition. Today on the battalion, we are at the start of the first 24 of 48 hours with engine 9 B shift. Early morning, at the moment of the shift change, a call comes in. It's a medical call. Right, I'll get the door. I got it too. I've been out for Nine arrives on scene. They enter this residence to find a young woman having breathing difficulties. The ambulance paramedic and EMT arrive on scene. The woman is pregnant and she is suffering from what could be a dangerous asthma attack. And I went to my doctors, but they couldn't see me when I went, so. Okay. Let's play one more and we'll get you on the way to the hospital. They bring out the nebulizer, which will dispense a breathing treatment for their patient. Did you have asthma with the first one? No. I was going to say, usually people with asthma have this dissipation on the pregnancy. Never, never had a she is in her ninth month of pregnancy. She needs to be transported to the hospital to ensure that there will be no future complications of any kind. The paramedic and EMT from the ambulance company, along with the crew, package up their patient and will transport her to the hospital. The engine company goes back in service and becomes available on the radio. Is that bad news on your car? Don't get it too close. Too close. Yeah. You don't put it right up against the paint. Yeah. <laughs> back at the station, they briefly meet in the kitchen for a quick plan to go to the market 
and they're out the door. They've arrived at the market and they head towards the entrance. Um, my first year as a captain was hell. I mean, I, every shift I'd go home and think, what the hell did I do? Um, it's such a learning experience and there's so much involved in it. Um, the calls really were learning experiences and because we're so busy here, that's something that we're, where we do benefit from. If you're a firefighter on a busy rig, you're gonna run a, a lot of calls. So you, you do get some experience. Being one of the busy stations, they take this moment to go shopping for their entire 48-hour shift. First stop, veggies. I think the personnel issues really surprised me at, at how difficult they were. Um, having probationary people underneath you, it was just a lot to take care of. Um, but the, the good part is we're so darn busy here, you're going to learn, you, it gets stuff in your face. So I would say after a year or two, it, it kind of clicked with me. Next up, protein. They shop in the dairy section before checkout. This is where it gets tricky for all firefighters. They have to hope that no call comes in from the time they stand in line to about 10 feet from the rig. The crew get through the line. They head back to the engine, still safe. They're safely back in the engine and will head back towards the station. The crew arrives home. They take their food supplies into the kitchen. Time is still on their side. No calls. It's the time of the year for all engine companies to test their hose lines. The captain explains the process. So every year we have to test hose. I believe it's an NFPA law. Um, a hose gets tested at a certain PSI in a certain time period depending on the type of hose, LDH versus a wildland hose. Wildland hose is, is at a higher PSI because it's usually used at a higher PSI. This is a hose tester that we use. Uh, we're supposed to use this instead of our fire engine. Uh, we did have a few accidents, uh, every department has, um, with the actual couplings exploding at the rig, which is very dangerous. So this is a hose tester. And what it does is kind of simulate a fire pump, in a sense. So you hook up the hose, it obviously has different size of orifices, and fill it up, and then you turn it on. I'm gonna turn it on just briefly so you can. And what that's gonna do is build up pressure in the hose. The hose gets tested on it differs what type of hose it is and what's it, what is it used for. So wildland hose gets tested, let's say, at 250 for five minutes um, versus our inch and three quarter and inch and a half gets tested at 300 for five minutes as well. So um, what this does, we can test 500 lengths off of each orifice, which is kind of nice um, because we can test that much in a day. Um, every Saturday we do this for the month of May and April. And what that takes care of is one, um, testing the hose, and two, we reload our hose um, so it doesn't get moldy and it doesn't stay in the creases. This particular fire engine uses its hoses all the time so we don't have that problem. At a slower station, you, you won't pull your LD off, LDH off for a whole year. However, we pull ours off once a month, minimum of once a month at least. So we don't have that problem with the creases, but this is what hose testing is for. Every fire department does it. It's NFPA law that we do it. We're not using it today because the weather's really well, really good. But a lot of the older stations and the two company houses, you're gonna have a hose tower. So how that works is, you see all those, those racks? Um, it helps when, one, the weather's bad and it won't dry outside. Two, it's just a nicer and neater way of doing it. Um, since we only did so much hose today and I have little pieces and sizes, we're just going to do it outside since it's hot today. But if you can probably see the bigger stations all have these hose towers. Often people are wondering what they're, they're used for and this is what it's used for, is to dry the hose. Um, they used to put the rookie uh, upstairs all the time and usually would bring in uh, some hose and squirt them down. So that's a tradition that we miss a little bit. So that's what it's used for. Firefighter engineer. Javier Pla starts the system. What we're doing right now, we're filling the hose. Once the hose is filled, 
Then I'll go ahead and turn the pump on. We've got a gauge here that will let us know what PSI we're at. Once we're at 250, we'll shut it down and keep track of it for five minutes and make sure there's no uh, errors with couplings. A call comes in. Engine nine is out the door. Paul comes in as a brush fire in the backyard of a home. <laughs> the wife on scene at a vacant lot. Smoke lingers in the street. Perkins has just put on his MSA SCBA for the first time. He jumps out and pulls a red line, waiting for the captain's instructions. The captain decides to check in with the captain of Engine 5, who was first in, and he and his crew have been attacking the fire. My name is James Perkins. I'm a firefighter with Fresno Fire, currently stationed at Station 9. Uh, I've been a firefighter here for seven and a half years. Uh, yeah, after traveling for a couple years, I, uh, I went through a few uh, stations. Uh, I'd I try to draw on the south end of town, stay busy, um, and uh, we were able to get a grant to put four people back at, at a few stations. Um, with that grant, it opened up a spot here at Station 9, and I uh, put in with the, with the crew that is here. I get along great with them. Uh, we have great crew camaraderie, uh, and it's just a great time, so I knew, uh, and they all wanted me to come by, so uh, I knew it would be a good match. After evaluating the scene, the captain requests Javier to bring the engine down the alley. The engineer maneuvers the engine down the narrow alley. They immediately pull red lines. This vacant lot is near residential homes on both sides. Fire has charred this vacant lot. A homeless person or one of the kids in the neighborhood may have started it. Captain Wiedemeyer moves a toasted couch that may have been where the fire started. They continue to douse the smoldering embers to eliminate any chance of a flare-up. It was like we had a uh vacant lot with some debris on fire. There was a couple homes nearby that were possible exposures. They upgraded the alarm to a uh, structure alarm and then uh, canceled once the uh, first arriving units got here and realized we could knock down a couple crews. About it. Javier puts down the screen that displays from the camera in the rear of the engine to help him safely back up. Always as a safety precaution, there is never less than one firefighter guiding the driver from the rear of the apparatus. In this case, it's both Perkins and Richards. The crew of Engine 9 is no longer needed. Engine 9 is available on the radio. The crew return home to the station to prepare some lunch. Oh, yeah. Today, firefighters Pla and Perkins prepare lunch for the crew. They hope to finish cooking before they catch another call. No such luck. Call they all get ready. With their seatbelt on, they head out the door. Engine 9 is arriving on scene. 
Engine One was first in on this call, and it is an alarm at this restaurant in the Tower District. As you can see, there is a they festival got going on. In for like a, I bet you they called in for like a barbecue. Yeah. The restaurant has evacuated their dining room, and the crew from Engine 1 is in search for smoke. A firefighter from Engine 1 uses a thermal imager to see if he can find any heat signatures that may be causing the smoke that they are checking for in the ceiling and the air ducts. Firefighter Perkins removes the tile to check the attic. This is a false hanging ceiling that is covering the original ceiling. This creates a problem with a firefighter who has to search for the source of smoke. Nothing is found. We got a couple of exhaust fans in the bathroom, but they're only at like 110 degrees. Yeah, just keeping it today. So, there is an attic access. There is an attic access. Okay. okay. They move to the kitchen in the rear of the restaurant to gain better access to the original attic. Yeah, there's nothing up here though. This attic's clear. That's clear. No. no, there's just a bunch of crap. Right After there. inspecting the attic space, they find that there is no smoke showing the in the area above the, the false ceiling. The no fire in this building. Captain Wiedemeyer yeah. talks to the restaurant owners to find out more information. He said he'd been on for like three hours. I think that's a good that may be a your culprit. Oh, sure. but, yeah. Uh, attic's clear. Just Where was the smoke coming from, Mark? The smoke was in that attic corner. Was clear. Oh, yeah, it was yeah. clear. Yeah. Was in that corner on the other side near the restroom entrance. But, um, you know, we're going to find it. It just takes a little while longer. It's much easier if everything's just completely going on fire. Everything's yeah, crazy. Not, not easier yeah. for you guys. I know, I know. I don't blame you. This is an interesting building, and it's a tough building. Yeah, it has like three ceilings. Yeah. yeah. And so it's and then you guys have all these different hallways. And uh, no, you guys have great food, and that's what matters. <laughs> <laughs> the way important. Yeah. What's up, gentlemen? You guys still up on the roof? Well, we're being approached for pictures, but that's all we can't do that without conditioning. That's probably a good idea, Rainbow. Good decision making. I told him we all had to talk to the mall people. What we have is just a lingering smell of smoke with a very strong odor. Possibly electrical. It's really hard when there's uh, no obvious source. So we check the HVAC system, check the electrical uh, breakers hadn't popped. So uh, we have to go down and just go slowly, go back to shutting off the system one by one and trying to find a system that's not working. So we believe it started in one of the HVAC systems. There were four on top of the roof. Uh, we're going to go with that for right now. So uh, turned everything back on, and that one was the only one that started more of a, a strong smell, no smoke, so it's possibly the fire just burned itself out, maybe a little piece of wire. They're the hardest, the, they're really the hardest fires to have when you can't find it. It's no obvious sign, no big flames, no, so uh, just spend a little bit more time looking for it. Engine 9 is once again back in service and available on the radio.
A call comes in, and it sounds like it may be a vegetation fire in an empty lot. The crew of Engine 9 is out the door. In route, they hear the call that there is smoke showing from a structure. I believe that fire came in as a still alarm, which engine five was still to. Uh, when you're still, that means you're just a single increment. Call engine command, for you to need additional equipment. Uh, you said there was multiple exposures. They got it as a vegetation fire. Um, a lot of vegetation in the back of the house caught the house on fire. So at the time, they were all in their wildland clothes. We are on a, like two houses in from the corner. We're going down the canal bank on College, and I need somebody on Fedora. Copy that. We advance towards the smoke-filled uh, so sky. A unit on Fedora in front of these addresses. Thank you, five and nine. We've arrived. We're going to get you hydrant. Engine 9 arrives on scene. They stop to find the closest hydrant. Engine 20, Engine 5. The engineer from Engine 5 is pulling yeah. his supply line. Perkins chooses to jump out the rig and help. Engine 5, truck 11. We'll be on scene in about 30 seconds. Do you have a route of travel or access for us? A crew member from Engine 5 is the Engine first five. to go in with a combat ready line. Copy. He pulls enough hose to create a loop in hopes to have enough line to safely enter the structure. College IC, go ahead. Start me two additional engines. Also, make working fire notifications. College IT, copy. Two additional engines we have made working fire notification. Water coming. <laughs> Smoke is coming from this home. Our cameraman goes around to the rear of the structure to see where the fire originated from. The fire quickly crossed the lot, has climbed up the walls of this home, and is now in the eaves and the attic. Engine 20 pulls a red line to extinguish the wooden fence and gate on fire. And it turned out uh, the back of the house was all on fire due to the wildland fire. So we took that portion, whereas other crews took the wildland fire. So it's kind of a sad deal. It's just an older couple, you know, all of their stuff burned up because of somebody else's wildland fire, probably somebody's cigarette. So that was unfortunate. And the poor lady. The engine crews put on their new MSA Firehawk air mask and new packs. Where are you? Park that. College IC truck four. Right now we're hovering right at College and Fedora. Where do you want us? Stop right there and the engine crew prepare to pull hose lines. Copy that. Engine six and rough. Engine crew uh, prepare to assist with ventilation and some salvage. It started out as a grass fire, so in route, everybody's in grass gear. Uh, and then, as the first arriving rig got there, they realized that it was in the house. Um, and actually, one of the firefighters uh, put his SCBA on with grass gear and tried to at least make a little stop. Um, it got too hot for him, so he had to come out. And we were there, and we had time to uh, get our full turnout gear on at the time.
copy that. Have them come up, uh, Maroa to Medora. Crew from Truck 11 have arrived on scene. They start their chainsaws and climb to the roof to start the ventilation process. I copy engine 6 and engine 7. Report north from Maroa to Fedora and east on Fedora for the IC. More lines are needed and more lines are brought in. The truckers traverse across the comp shingled roof to create various holes in several locations. With the sound of chainsaws blaring, they begin their cuts. As the cuts are made, more and more smoke fills the air. We got the grass fire to the uh, west of the residential fire under control. We're going to need another tank of water. Can you send an engine back over here? Roger, tank. Engine 7 arrived at College of Fedora. Captain Durney checks on his truck crew. Engine 7, uh, new assignment. Uh, Go to the canal bank at Maroa and the canal. Engine 20, uh, some water. Engine 7, copy. Maroa for, for uh, water for 20. Engine 6, still continue to Fedora side. Engine 6, copy. Fedora side. In the interior of the home, they pool ceiling and insulation. Uh, we were able to go in and actually put the rest of the fire out. Um, but it was, uh, it was interesting uh, using the new SCBAs, not just in a training scenario, but in a real life uh, fire situation. The captains make a judgment call to start the ventilation process. Captain Wiedemeyer cranks it up. never know if all the embers have been completely put out. In this case, they have not. Flames blow out the vents that have been cut in the roof. quickly move to the adjacent garage that has a stuck garage door. No problem, they use a chainsaw to rip open the garage door to gain access. Inside the home, you can see through the rafters. Firefighters with their SCBAs continue to put out the fire throughout the attic. Help them with that red line, guys. We need it in this, this one. They pull a line and start getting water on its contents and the rafters above. We enter the home through the rear of the structure. You can see the firefighters in the burnt lot still putting water on the ground and the rear of the structure. We kind of have a culture here in Fresno of uh, good salvage. Um, you know, if, if it looks like junk to us, it may not be junk to the person that owns it. So we treat everything that's actually salvageable and not already destroyed by fire or water 
like it, it's our own. We take it out with care, we put it out in the yard nicely, um, and we make sure that we can save whatever is salvageable for those people. So they, they can go through, maybe find pictures or something that we may not even know is important to them, but you know, uh, we've, we've gotten some great feedback on, people are very happy with uh, us being able to save some of their memorabilia and their, their family heirlooms. The family of this home sit quietly and watch firefighters remove their personal items. Our guys responded out here this afternoon about 2.30 to a report of a grass fire. And Engine 5 arrived and found that the fire that, that was reported was encroaching on this house that was behind us, um, or actually in front of me now. The fire was uh, so close to the house that he called for additional resources and we sent a, uh, a residential alarm to the, uh, to the fire. Um, the quick response from these guys and the way they work hard was definite. You can see the results in the fire. They did a great job of stopping it, uh, that fire from destroying that structure. Uh, one of the other things that we do out here is on a hot day where it's over or projected to be over 100 degrees, we dispatch an additional engine for rehab so that we can keep these guys cool and hydrated and, and all those things. Doesn't always work. Sometimes those rehab engines get sucked into the incident, but for the most part, the additional resources that we, uh, we dispatch for fires like this on hot days is, is a real benefit. The health of the firefighters in Fresno is of the utmost importance. The temperature is well over 100 degrees today. They set up an area to take vital signs such as heart rates for all of the firefighters on scene. One of the crew from Fresno Fire's maintenance shop fills the MSA air bottles with their new air support unit with the Bauer compressor. Captain Wiedemeyer goes to the air support truck to grab a new bottle. Perkins has just grabbed a new filled air bottle for his SCBA rig. James stows his gear so as to be ready for the next call. Engine Company 9 is back in service and available on the radio. I'm just